ready? Uh, yes, the recording has yeah. started, uh, and there we go. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, uh, dear colleagues and uh, friends. Uh, all the national focal points for PRC reporting across the Asia Pacific region. Uh, first of all, I wish you a very happy new year uh, of 2021 with every success. Uh, we stopped during this holiday season and today we resume again the Thursday morning session on PRC reporting uh, for the Asia Pacific region. Uh, my name is Fen Jing. I'm chief of Asia Pacific unit of the World Heritage Center. Uh, together with me, I have my colleagues uh, of the center, uh, Valentino Edouard, uh, and uh, Anatole, Michel, and Akane, uh, who are taking care of the, uh, the periodical reporting uh, exercise in the Asia Pacific region. Welcome uh, to you all, and thank you for attending the 11th session of our Thursday morning uh, training or orientation. As you all know, in, uh, in fact, on the 1st of October, uh, the World Heritage Center launched the third cycle of periodical reporting for the Asia Pacific region uh, with the web news and also together with a video message from the director of the center. Uh, this exercise is going to be carried out between 2020 up to June, July 2022. Asia Pacific uh, is the third region uh, to undertake this important uh, statutory reporting exercise. Uh, and I think uh, we, we are after the Arab states and the Africa region. It is also the first time that in the history of periodical reporting that all preparatory meetings and including this training for a region were held online only due to the global COVID situation that we are facing last year and up to now. We have been very happy that to see many of our stakeholders across the region have adopted the tools and also made available from the self-paced learning modules to the online Teams Exchange platform for national focal points and also some site managers. Together with our field offices, Category 2 centers, and the advisor bodies to the World Heritage Committee, the Asia Pacific Unit and the colleagues of the center we continue to provide coordination and assistance to the third cycle of periodical reporting. And I'm very grateful for the active participation and support of all the national authorities across Asia Pacific. I think all of you should have the access to the online, uh, to the online questionnaire and also the, the Teams platform, uh, I think organized by the center. So uh, I noted also very happy to note that some of the, the national training workshops were organized uh, in, I think, in, in support of the periodical reporting exercise. And I'm sure that uh, you are ready uh, to submit the questionnaires uh, as we, uh, we are expecting that by end of January, uh, the questionnaire on section one will be uh, preliminary submitted and by end of March uh, this year the questionnaire on section two um, in particular relating to the state of conservation of specific sites could be uh, submitted. So uh, this week is not a real uh, training session and we designed that as a question and answer so the focus for this 11th session will be on questions uh, relating to uh, section one and if you have also it may have other uh, general questions regarding to the third cycle of periodical reporting. So I think in the past 10 uh, training sessions we have covered 
the main topics uh, relating to section one and also some issues, some thematic uh, subjects. Uh, I think uh, the the uh, in particular the se the session on the 15th of, of October uh, dedicated to question uh, to the section one questionnaire and some of the complex questions uh, were also uh, analyzed in detail. So I think the with all the presentations we made available, and I think these videos were recorded, and uh, we hope this will, will also be disseminated through the team's uh, platform. You will have a better understanding of the exercise. And now I think it's time to really to finish and also complete the questionnaire and submit them in a timely manner. Uh, as a euro practice, we'll be also recording uh, the, uh, the this session, and depending on the uh, participation and also questions, if if it is needed, we will also made available the the video. I think uh, uh, one just uh, last point is that uh, uh, I think as I said, this is uh, this uh, the whole exercise up to now for the Asia Pacific region been organized through the online uh, platform, particularly the Teams platform, and the training materials and other tools were also made available. So I, it is hoped that you can also share these training materials, guidebooks, and other resource materials to the site managers and other stakeholders and the partners. Uh, relating to the World Heritage Program and the World Heritage Commission. So with that uh, brief uh, introduction, I stop here. So now I have, I say, uh, my, my colleagues, uh, Valentino, Edward, uh, and um, uh, also uh, Anatole, Michel Van, and Akane uh, will be ready to answer the questions uh, together with the team. Uh, so now the floor is yours. Uh, you can use the, I think in the Teams system, you have the uh, a function, uh, a symbol, like a hand. You can raise your hands, or you can put questions in the chat uh, section. So I think Michelle can explain further on how we go ahead with, uh, go ahead to treat uh, all the questions. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Feng, uh, and good morning to everyone. Uh, since today's session will be uh, a little bit uh, of a looser format, uh, we still want to make sure that we address all of the questions that you have uh, in a timely and appropriate manner. So uh, if you have any questions that are a little bit lengthy uh, or, or that you, you want to, to vocalize to us, please go ahead and use the raise hand function, uh, which uh, should be either located uh, in the uh, middle of your screen near uh, the, the mute button uh, or the chat function. Uh, otherwise, uh, you can of course use the chat to write your questions, which uh, we do have a few questions that we can start with from the chat. Uh, if, if you do take the floor and if you do uh, uh, speak up, uh, please make sure that you, you let us know your name and your, your current function. Uh, as national focal point within uh, your your country. Uh, otherwise, uh, if if there are any other questions that we can't answer during the session, you are of course more than welcome to email us at wh periodic reporting uh, at unesco.org. Uh, so uh, I think uh, before, okay, excellent. So I think what we'll do is we'll address the questions that are in chat. Uh, and uh, what we'll do, uh, if if Niraj, if you're on the line, uh, if uh, I'll 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 say them out loud. But uh, if if you would like uh, to follow up in any way, please let us know. Yeah, uh, sure. Thanks, Michelle. No problem. So, uh, following queries. Uh, so, number one, if the answer to the principal piece of legislation from the country. Uh, uh, from the country is in. Oh, sorry. sorry, it, sorry. The, the whole the whole thing jumped. <laughs> uh, if the answer to the part, uh, particular question is number, I 
e.g. Or no. To, so maybe you could uh, clarify. If, if, the, if, so if, the, if the answer is no on question 213, I'll share my screen so that everyone can see uh, as well. By the way, uh, good morning, everyone. This is Anatol speaking. Um, and a very happy new year uh, and a happy periodic reporting year to all of you. Let me begin with this. So uh, this the question concerned 213 which ask whether the state party intends to designate any world heritage properties for inclusion in this case on the list of, uh, of wetlands the ramsar yeah. convention in the next three years um this is the the same answer will be true of a number of other questions in the same vein which is a yes or no questions uh, that then have a follow-up question uh, underneath which says you know please indicate in if if yes which are these um and in this specific case, you will see uh, you have to answer question 213. You have to provide an answer. But here you have a flag that tells you that question 214 is optional, which means that it does not count towards your completion percentage and you do not have to provide an answer. If you said no to question 213, then you can leave this blank. Uh, if you have said yes, then provide some information. Uh, if you have said no and you want and you provide some text as well, you're not going to break the system either. Um, but there's no uh, there's no expectation that you have to provide an answer here because it's it's not a mandatory question. Okay. That's, this, that's clear. This, is, this is true yeah. of all of the of all of the follow up questions like these. Um, there was a question as well from Uniraj on the uh, pieces of legislation from the country using the UNESCO database. Uh, that one is um, as well. Uh, so that's question 511. Uh, you have a link here to uh, in the uh, in the guidance as well. Uh, normally, well, no, it's directly in the little box uh, to the UNESCO database which is this uh, and here in, you are able to filter uh, through the list of international normative instruments uh, random selection i have done for india here uh, so this gives you all that is currently in the database um, this obviously is less up to date than the information you may have at the uh, national level there may have been changes that aren't entirely reflected here. I know the colleagues who maintain this uh, put a lot of effort into making sure that it is up to date, but it's obviously dependent on the information provided by the permanent delegations to UNESCO. So if you notice any discrepancies, you can indicate that in the in the questionnaire itself. Okay. Uh, and it's so that we we pull the data from this table. And then you, are, you can add, especially things that are very specific to World Heritage that may not be in the big uh, list of national uh, cultural legal frameworks. These can be added. And I'm. And, and maybe, I don't if I may add. Uh, yes, just absolutely. One point. I was going to. I was going to ask whether we uh, whether we post Phil. So. Yeah. So this information, um, this question specifically, uh, some of you has uh, there's a bug uh, that the question was supposed to be post field, so the information is supposed to appear here, and then you have noticed that there you have these comments. You can see below that this information will be fulfilled by the World Trade Center, but it just might be a technical bug. And this is why, as you said clearly, Anatole, that you have to go click on the link of the national database to find information. But some of you might see this information already filled here. In case, as you said, it's one of the information is not like one decision missing or more, you can just click on update and then put your information uh, in the box, which will appear after clicking on, uh, on update. Many thanks. Yeah. Okay, thank you, thanks, yes. Thank you, Valentino. Um, and then there's a there was an interesting question about our automatic gathering functions for questions 13.1. Um, so if I go to the the right question, 13 <clears throat> for section one gathers all of the essentially all of the questions that have been answered. In chapters 1 to 12 that are not entirely 
positive. There is no uh, limits. There's no classification by top 10, as far as I recall. That is in section two. Uh, so the, the, the automatic gathering of information in section two about the property, this does a top 10. This is actually the complete list of all of the things that are listed as being less than perfect. Uh, and so you, you'll see you have quite a few uh, more in our demo uh, questionnaire here that are not um, that are not uh, uh, limited to, to the top 10. And it is, as you can see, by heading of each chapter of the questionnaire. Uh, and so this gives you a summary of uh, sort of core questions that are flagged for uh, for upload here. I don't know, Valentino, if you have a, a better explanation of the technicalities. Uh, it was still, it's very clear uh, at this stage on question 13.1, there's nothing to be done. Just you just give you a list of the of all the issues appearing in here. There's nothing to be done at this uh, on this question. It's on the next question, which I think you need. If, if you can click on the next question, please, Anatole, yes. um, that you need to select the top 10 uh, issues. And if I understand the question, uh, which is mentioned that if does does um, does uh, let me go back to the question uh, or the top question is selected by default or from our response. Oh, so here in 13.2.1, you need to choose the top 10 mm. issues, but by yourself, as you considered as the most important issues. So this is where you need to select yourself. And I, I think I would also like to add uh, for, for those of you who have two national focal points, uh, it means that uh, you will both have to review this. I mean, and in general, you, you will both have to review section one, uh, but in particular for the top 10, uh, this is a, a discussion that you will have to have with uh, jean Luigi at uh, ASI, since he is the second uh, national focal point. And, and let me add another thing, uh, uh, Michel, please. Uh, also, you, 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 you need to be careful every time you unselect an issues and click in for new issues, for example, you think consider that one of the issues less important in the top 10. This has an impact on the coming question. So everything you modify here will impact on the assessment. So just, um, just, just, just bear this in mind that if when you will start to modify one question uh, to going to on the previous, you have to might go to the back to the uh, next chapters to, to look at them for assessment. Mm. OK, uh, thank you. I just wanted to clarify again. If we could just go to the end of this page that you were just sharing right now. And then I just have a specific question on that. You could just go to the last point on, uh, yes, point number 11. So um, there is a say where we select this uh, tick mark, the tick mark on saying forms of international cooperation. So what exactly is this statement implying? In, because this is not saying anything that we have done or not done. What is this saying exactly? What is it supposed to imply? But if it's if it's not applicable, you are uh, you are entirely free to to leave it out, uh, because this is this is pulled from the from the questionnaire. Let me just uh, finish reading it. Uh, but but actually, I agree. Okay. Uh, this well, when when so when when you identify actions for the implementation of the convention. Uh, you can one of the big aspects of the convention is international cooperation and cooperation mechanisms so if you feel that uh, the state party could reinforce its efforts in that regard mm -hmm. increase participation and so on you can select this as a, essentially a top action point for the future that's that's what i would say um, okay so, so it's, of, an, it's an action okay it's an action point Yes. Yeah. OK, thank you. Thank you, Anadol. Uh, maybe I can add one sort of specific reference here on Chapter 11 on international cooperation. So together with the World Heritage Convention, also in 1972, 
the General Conference adopted the recommendation for the implementation of the World Heritage Convention at the national level. So there are there are some specific action points uh, I think could be referenced from this recommendation, 1972 uh, recommendation on the implementation of the convention at the national level. So I think there you can do a sort of cross reference between this uh, recommendation and also the chapter uh, 11. I think that that is uh, no, it's a in any event this was a sort of like a description. If you have some information to be provided, you can include there. But if not, I think it's also a sort of self-assessment and for you to do a cross-reference with this recommendation. Thank you. OK, thank you. Yeah, that's clear. Uh, all right. Uh, now, before we continue with the questions in the chat, uh, I will skip a few because we have one for this section, which asks, uh, that for them, they have only two choices and the others are not active. Now, uh, I, I think this is because of the options that were selected late uh, earlier in the questionnaire, but I'll leave this to the others to clarify. Yes, uh, I, I would say the same as well. Uh, if you have filled out most of uh, chapters 1 through 12 and you still only have two options, um on uh, on main uh, on main factors or potential uh, action points that if uh, here um do let us know because either you've done everything perfectly and so therefore there is nothing that gets flagged by the questionnaire or there there might be a, a slight glitch somewhere but theoretically as you filled out all of the questionnaire the more you fill out the questionnaire the more items will be uh, reflected in chapter 13. Uh, and if if you filled out everything and nothing shows up here, uh, just drop us drop us an email, tell, tell us which country this concerns and, and we'll have a look at our end to see uh, if we can. Valentino, do you have anything more? Um, no, uh, I think it's very clear and it is uh, I'll just back up what you just said. Thanks. Thank you. OK, so next we have uh, uh, Suresh, uh, who mentions that uh, in Nepal that you have been organizing workshops with all site managers. Fantastic. Actually, I'll, I'll take a moment to ask uh, and, uh, everyone who is in the call at the moment and those who will watch uh, this this recording that uh, we would definitely appreciate uh, a small if you were to send us a small paragraph on how the national workshops uh, worked out, especially during this this health crisis. Uh, we very much appreciate this because we would be able to use this uh, and, and potentially uh, take a look at the strategies that were used at a national level. Uh, and uh, so we'll continue. Uh, right now we do uh, uh, sometimes when filling in the questionnaire when statements uh, when statements are not applicable. Uh, uh, and we leave it without writing anything. It shows incompatible and, and says invalid uh, when filling in with non-applicable. In this case, what should we do for the uh, the answers for this question? So uh, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Suresh, but I believe you're you're mentioning the cases where you uh, where you say it's not applicable and then there's a text box and it, it requires you to put something in the text box. I believe in these cases, uh, what, you, what you can do is just write a simple no comment, uh, and this should fill in uh, the text box if the text box is required. However, if it is marked with the green flag, uh, if uh, Anatol, if you could scroll up just for a second, uh, the green flag optional, these are not required to fill in. Uh, so if uh, if you do have the optional text box, but it requires you to fill it in. That is a bug and you should let us know. But otherwise, if, if it has the green check mark, uh, then uh, these are ones that you will have to fill in. And at a minimum, you should just put in no comment if there is nothing to add. Uh, I'll, uh, would anybody like to add anything on this? No, that's clear. Although if you do have, uh, if Suresh, if, if you have a specific question number in mind to do let us know then we can have a we can have a specific look at it um in the questionnaire but i i agree with what michelle said uh we 
we try and, and eradicate as many of the small technical glitches in the questionnaire as we can and as the process goes along but sometimes they decide to spontaneously reappear so uh, we're always happy if, if you let us know that there's something strange going on with the questionnaire because then we can fix it for everybody All right, uh, the next question is a very important question, <laughs> uh, which is, uh, must section one be completed by 100% by the end of January 2021 and section two by uh, March 2021? Can the answers be changed before the final submission in July for both sections after the early completion deadline? Uh, the I, I'll, I'll leave this to the others to, to clarify in detail, but in short, the January uh, and March deadlines are to encourage the gathering and and uh, the the completion of the information in the questionnaire. Uh, this is because through experience with other regions, we know that uh, sometimes it can take a lot of effort to to get the information that is required. In this sense, we uh, set these uh, deadlines so that to to encourage everyone to to reach a certain level of completion. That way, you and uh, the the site managers for the uh, sites within uh, each state party are able to then go back and review uh, the information that is in the questionnaire. Uh, I'll leave uh, the rest of the details to to my colleagues. Uh, Anatoly, you want to start or? Um, I, I, I will take it. Uh, well, Michel has already uh, given the, the gist of the answer, but um, you can absolutely edit everything until the very last minute before you submit the questionnaire by the deadline on the 31st of uh, July. Uh, the, the idea for the early submission deadlines is really to allow for a bit of an exchange, to allow our experts to have a look at your data with the knowledge that it has progressed sufficiently and that we can we can start having a look uh, and seeing if there are any questions that we feel may have been either misunderstood uh, or if there are discrepancies within the data that may need to be addressed based on experiences with previous regions. Um, so it's a it's just a way for us to check that everything is fine and to uh, provide some additional assistance and some, some tailored guidance if it's needed to all of you as you fill out your questionnaires. This is, it's a long exercise and you absolutely have and should make use of the entire duration of the reporting window. Um, the two things that I would flag on this occasion uh, are that obviously we asked that you reach as high a percentage as possible by uh, the early submission deadline so that it's worth the, the time and effort of our experts team to look into this. Uh, the other uh, aspect is that please, please, please uh, do not either submit or lock the questionnaires. We will just um, look at, we, we have visibility over all of your answers and so do the periodic reporting uh, experts who will look at the at the questionnaires over the next couple of months and get in touch with you if needed. Um, but there's um, yeah, if if you if you submit or lock the questionnaires, we will basically you block yourself from answering it any further, uh, or you block your national focal your site managers from doing so. Uh, so there's no there's no need to submit anything before you are actually done with uh, answering the questionnaire uh, and. The last point that I would like to make, and this is, of course, because we have such a huge linguistic diversity within the Asia Pacific region. We know full well that many of you are filling out the questionnaire offline in the national languages, especially this is especially true for section two, but um, also sometimes I guess for section one that might be the case as well, uh, and we are just to give us an idea of how far along you are, it, feel free to also input questions in your national language for the time being. Uh, we will Google Translate away if needed, if we don't have experts who speak the languages. Um, but if you feel that you can benefit from guidance, but the text is not yet available, the comments are not yet available in English, do put them in and we'll do, we'll do our very best to, uh, to deal with them. It's, perhaps a little bit paradoxical for, for us that it's very hard for us to see how far along 
a number of uh, a number of countries are in terms of statistics, uh, because we we see completion percentages that are a lot lower than they actually are, at least from what we understand from our view from our states parties, because of the uh, the different translation questions. Uh, so we are we're trying uh, to uh, to remain entirely positive and to trust you that you are all deeply engaged in the process. Uh, but if you feel that you need any guidance, even if the texts are not yet translated properly, do put them in. We'll we'll figure out a way uh, a way around the language issue. Um, and that's that's a true. Section one, I feel, is is filled filled out mostly by national focal points. So it's likely to be more likely to be in English. But even if by the end of March for section two, you do not have a, an English version for every single question, that is perfectly acceptable. We'll, we'll find workarounds for you. Uh, and finally, even if you're not at you know 80% completion, but you have specific questions uh, about how to fill out something, or you would like to have guidance from the experts, from the advisory bodies, from us at the center on one specific question or two, do not hesitate to email us, to use the Teams platform or whatever whatever you choose, but do get in touch and we will try and help you along as much as we can. That's all I have to say. Valentino, do you have anything to add? I think you perfectly said everything. Thank you. Um, Michelle, I think we have another question. You want to read it aloud from... Um... Yes, so so I well, first of all, we'll we'll address the question. Uh, Niraj, uh, your your hand is still up. I'm not sure if this is from earlier, uh, but in order, we'll we'll go question uh, the the questions in the chat. So we have uh, there are some questions which answers uh, which where answers do not differ uh, between culture and nature, like eight point one or eight uh, ten point six. What if the answer is different for culture and nature? I think the best way to do this is to go directly. Uh, to the questions as Anatole is doing, uh, 8.1. Yeah. Uh, could could you let's see of the following sources of funding for? Okay, go ahead. Yeah, um, if if I may answer this question, uh, it's uh, when you have this kind of similar question where both culture and nature uh, is being uh, requested, uh, and if the, for example you have only culture and not nature, uh, for example national government funds where you have funds for culture but not for nature, but that in that case we do not consider you to look one by I mean both together. It could be either or. So if you have fund for nature but not fund for culture. It, you should consider it as, I mean, you can rate it according to nature and according to culture, because this is for culture and nature, I mean, as a whole, like, as I said, and there's no need for you to dif dissociate one to each other. If you don't have one and you have for the other, you can still act the resp response for the other one as, I mean, the grading as for the other one. So this is um, just, just straightforward. So I um, I think uh, if anyone wants to say something else, uh, just to say that we, you also have a comment box. So if there is exactly because the, 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 the section section one is about World Heritage as a whole. And as you know, the, the big uh, USP of this convention, if you will, is that uh, it is it concerns both nature and culture uh, and treats them equally. So it's about the, the global picture. If only one of them concerns your state party, that's easy. If you have both and the situation is drastically different for one versus the other, that's a good use of the of the comment box, uh, and these will be taken into account as well as we uh, analyze the data. Uh, so that's that. And I haven't looked at we haven't looked at ten point six, but I assume that it's a similar situation. But let's just verify. Maybe we can learn something from that as well. Anatole, uh, as yes, you are I'm scrolling, uh, just, I just would like to add that when you see a question where it's concerning culture and natural heritage. Um, for section one. Uh, section one covers natural cultural heritage, be it world heritage or not. So if there is no mention of world heritage in the question, so the question covers nature, natural and cultural heritage as general in your country. It could be sites which are not being uh, and, uh, listed on the world heritage list. It could be something else as far as it concerns uh, nature and cultural heritage in the country. But when they specifically question will mention world heritage, so we are asking question on the world heritage sites. So if there's no mention, it's general. 
thank yes. you, Anatel. You can you want to go for question ten? Uh, ten points. It was, it's the it's the same idea in terms of response, right? That um, it, ten six concerns impact assessments uh, for um, programs, development projects uh, that may have an impact on the World Heritage property. This will be very familiar to uh, those of you. Uh, who know uh, your uh, paragraphs 172 uh, of the operational guidelines um, and um, you have to answer this question. This obviously concerns uh, the World Heritage Properties. If the situation is drastically different between culture and nature, use the comment box, but same thing, this is an average between the two. Um, and uh, you will, uh, you will, and you have the opportunity uh, to provide more information in the follow-up optional follow-up question just afterwards. Um, and if, 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 it's, if it's really tricky uh, for you, uh, that's a good opportunity to raise the question as well during uh, the, uh, the exchange period with our experts after the, uh, the early submission deadline to ask them to you know, have a look at the situation and give you a pointer as to how they think that the question is best answered given your particular situation. So our next question, uh, thank you Anatole and Valentino for this. Our next question is also in, in chapter 10 uh, regarding policy and resourcing. Uh, would you ask for the supporting documents later on? Uh, because the translation may take a very long time and uh, we would have to consider uh, it from almost now. Uh, so I, I, I leave it up to you. Valentina, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that we ask for supporting no. documents. No, uh, for the exercise, there is no supporting document requested. Uh, yes. for both section one and two. It's essential. Point. Essentially, the only documents that we uh, that we require are the ones that are statutory requirements under the convention. So that's you know maps and and statements of AUD exactly. and all of these. So uh, these are usually covered in chapter one. After that, you're very welcome to share with the center anything that you have at any point. We will keep it in our archives uh, and and it can be very useful. Um, but it's we do not collect. Uh, files if you will through the questionnaire yeah. and put them anywhere exactly so for the so for the cycle i think it's for the cycle where there is no documents to be sent as supporting document for any case as only for maps and it's still maps is not a requirement we don't request you to send maps in the framework of the exercise for section two and maps as you know is has to go uh, on specific um validation, I would say it has to be submitted to the committee. So it's completely something out of the exercise framework. So there's no supporting documents to be done. Maybe, uh, maybe uh, uh, Sahed, uh, I can see only the, the name. Uh, maybe you want this. Maybe the question is not answered. Are the person is looking for because maybe it's something else. Because in the policy, um, in the policy and resourcing chapter, there is no request for for, for documents. So maybe the specific question for that. It just just on the topic of maps. Um, just Which is completely session, not session. Yes, exactly. Yes, on on the on our next session on the twenty eighth, I believe, deals with maps, boundaries, and all of these questions specifically. Uh, ahead of uh, thinking ahead to section two. So we'll have an opportunity to discuss this topic in, in a great deal of detail, notably with our colleague Luba Yanikova from the nominations unit, who uh, very kindly agreed to, uh, as the great specialist on this, give us a rundown of all of her knowledge. Perfect, and we answered the question, it appears. Very good. Do we have anything else that we have not answered? Have we overlooked anybody? Uh, Everybody in chat has been answered so far. Uh, so, so we have an open floor uh, for for anyone who has any questions. Uh, so, so anybody uh, may may raise their hand. Uh, they can write their questions in chat. Mm. 
Yeah, a quick comment. Since we are here at this uh, question answer session, if you, I think we will not limit only to section one. If you have any general question uh, on the periodical reporting exercise, I think uh, you're also welcome to ask. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. And if a, if a brilliant question comes to you uh, after the meeting, as these things sometimes happen, uh, don't hesitate. Send us an email and and uh, or a message on the Teams platform, and we will uh, make sure to as well share that piece of information with the with the the rest of the periodic reporting participants uh, in the follow up messages. So don't yeah, don't hesitate to ask your questions at any time. In any case. OK, I think. Uh, dear colleagues, if we not, I think we may we may also conclude here. Of course, any event it's ongoing exercise. I think uh, if as uh, Anadol just announced, if you have any questions, we can also exchange either through the team's platform or email or any other means. Uh, I think now. Uh, First of all, uh, very happy, very happy that uh, I think this is the this is the first uh, session at the beginning of the year, and uh, uh, we we were worrying that maybe there will be less or, or or even no participants, but I noted there are around 25 people um, at this session. So I'm quite happy with your. I think the active uh, participation also shows your dedication and the commitment to this uh, periodical reporting exercise. Uh, a special word of thanks to to my colleagues. Normally we don't do that, but I think uh, uh, to Valentino, Anatole, Michel, and Akane for organizing uh, the session and also providing uh, the answers to the questions uh, to the national focal points. Uh, I have some uh, sort of quick uh, comments on this uh, section one, I think as a sort of a closing remark. First, I noted that um, the chapter 14 was on the good, uh, the good practice examples. I think this is important for some uh, for countries, particularly those have a large number of World Heritage uh, properties being culture, natural and mixed. Uh, the reason I, I, I recall the story of the, I think we did once a best practice award in around 2012 on the occasion of the 40th anniversary of the convention. And the town of Regan from the Philippines was selected as the best practice example. I think this is an important way to showcase to other uh, site managers and also the professionals working in the field of World Heritage. Now, with the periodical reporting, I think it's also important at a national level. Uh, you may do also assessment and uh, regarding uh, the state of conservation in particular for the site uh, on the World Heritage list. I think this way uh, we'll keep a sort of dynamic way of uh, assessment and evaluation on the state of conservation. I recall that uh, in 2020, 2012, uh, there were also another site called Jujai Go from China was also listed as top, uh, top three uh, best practice. Uh, now we have this opportunity of periodical reporting. I think it's also a good way of reflection at your national level. What uh, I think those good practice examples uh, this may also enable us to see some of the good examples to be to set as a model for other countries. First point. Secondly, I think Michelle already touched this point, saying providing information uh, on the national uh, workshops you organized because the reason we are we are planning to do a newsletter. A newsletter on the periodical reporting exercise in the Asia Pacific region. So, if you already organize the national workshops, uh, please provide brief information to us 
so that we can reflect those activities in the newsletter. So far, I know some of the national workshops being organized in China, Nepal, uh, the Republic of Korea. I, 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 I'm sure that there are many also organized in other countries. So please provide brief information to Anadol and Michelle, I think you know very well, and so that we can uh, summarize this uh, information in the newsletter to be prepared. So hopefully uh, we can receive the information before end of uh, next week, as soon as possible. So we can uh, we can reflect this in the uh, newsletter to be prepared. Uh, also here, I, I, I already am very happy to note some of the good friends like Agu, Anora, Jean, uh, Nija, and Suresh here on the screen. So at the beginning of the, of the year, a very happy new year to all friends. Uh, the third point is uh, relating to the training session. I think so far, as, uh, as uh, announced at the beginning of the session, uh, the online training so far for, uh, for the periodic reporting, I think in Asia Pacific, is a specific uh, feature. Uh, for the running of the exercise in 2020, uh, really due to the global health situation of COVID. Uh, uh, of course, this is, a, I call, additional workload for, for the team and also for colleagues at the center. But we were very happy to, to take up this additional workload in, the, in organizing the training and orientation sessions and also in providing the training materials, resource materials, and also including the video clips uh, to be ready for distribution. Uh, another factor, I think really thanks to the financial support of uh, the Republic of Korea Founding Trust, uh, it enabled us to organize uh, this type of online training uh, to to make available all the training materials and also including the human resources. So I think uh, really we are grateful for the strong support of this uh, funding trust to the third cycle of periodical reporting. So I think uh, this really also enable us during this special period have I call the friendly gathering and uh, encounter so that uh, everyone uh, I, I say instead of doing nothing, we are really doing something uh, meaningful. Uh, as a way forward, I think uh, we need to also uh, reflect a bit on the training sessions. Uh, now, now, uh, up to now, we are doing that on a uh, bi-weekly basis. Uh, but as you all know, from February onwards, the the center as the secretary to will be. Uh, take up another new phase for the preparation of the World Heritage Committee, uh, working documents, all other state of conservation, you know very well. So we are thinking maybe um, also uh, the training sessions will be at the margin or uh, uh, concentrate uh, on some topics. So uh, those uh, being planned, we, uh, we will do a sort of a rescheduling of the uh, training sessions. So this is Lastly, I think as a next step, uh, we are considering to, to select some uh, mentors uh, to analyze the information, the, the information, uh, the questionnaire who are submitted. And I think this is also uh, as, a, as a past practice, we will be sharing some information with the UNESCO Institute of Statistics so that the, the information uh, uh, provided can also be analyzed uh, from a statistic uh, perspective. So the mentors and also US uh, <clears throat> consultant will do some uh, preliminary analysis of the information provided. Uh, so I will also keep you informed uh, about this. So I think that's, that's all the, the quick comments I got. Uh, and this is the first session at the beginning of the year. Uh, I wish all our friends and colleagues across the region a very happy new year. Uh, happy new year with every success, prosperity, and most importantly, health. So uh, lastly, we hope that uh, very soon uh, we could organize the face-to-face the -face meetings in the region 
to carry out uh, this exercise. With that, I wish you a very nice day. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank, Thank you, you very bye. much, everybody. Okay. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you yeah. very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. 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 Th